Hello friends, I'm Coy Wire, this is CNN 10, and it's hashtag your word Wednesday, so remember to keep an ear out to see if your vocab word helped us write today's show. We begin today with the much anticipated solar eclipse. On Monday, millions of Americans will witness one of the world's most extraordinary events as the moon passes between Earth and the sun. For the lucky ones right in the heart of the action in the so-called path of totality, you're in for a treat that lasts up to four minutes, according to NASA. For those outside of the direct path, a crescent-shaped partial eclipse will be the main event, weather permitting, of course. Now, when you're watching from wherever you're watching, remember there's no peeking at the solar eclipse without your shades on. And I'm not talking about your usual sunglasses. It's best to use specialized solar eclipse glasses or watch through a handheld solar viewer. Joseph Galbo with the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has more. If you are thinking about watching the solar eclipse, but you don't have eclipse glasses, do not try to use your regular sunglasses. Don't do it. Your sunglasses can't handle it. Definitely don't stare at the eclipse without any sort of protection. If you stare at the eclipse with your naked eye, you're going to injure your eyes pretty badly. Ah! If you don't have solar eclipse glasses, create a solar eclipse pinhole projector. It's just a way of watching the shadow of the eclipse move across the sun. You just need a few simple things. This is a cereal box. We turned it inside out for legal reasons, but if you do turn it inside out, you could decorate it, and that's super fun. You need a marker or a pencil, some tape, a push pin or a paper clip, some aluminum foil, a pair of scissors, and some printer paper. First step, trace the box onto a piece of paper. Step two, cut out your tracing. Take the piece of paper and place it at the bottom of the box. You want to line the bottom of the box with a white sheet of paper because what you're actually going to be seeing is the shadow of the moon moving across the front of the sun, and the brighter the reflection of that screen, the better you'll be able to see the shadow. Next, you want to cut the tabs off the sides of the box. You're going to cut these flaps on the box about a third of the way this way and this way. You want to do this to both sides. It should look like this. Next, you want to tape the center of the box. Get a sheet of aluminum foil and fold it. And then, place it on one side of the box, fold it over to create a nice screen. And you're going to want to tape it on every single side. With your paper clip or your push pin, you're going to want to create a hole in the center of the aluminum foil. Now your pinhole projector is ready, so you can head outside, make sure the sun is behind you, hold the projector up to your eye, and then look for sunlight to come into the projector. Once it has, just hold it in place and you can watch the eclipse. 10 second trivia, which ice cream flavor is the most popular among American consumers? Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, or cookies and cream? Can we not say all the above? Sure, why not? Well, America's favorite ice cream flavor is chocolate though, according to the International Dairy Foods Association. Cocoa is the main ingredient that makes chocolate possible, and West Africa is home to 70% of it, did you know? But poor climate and crop diseases have tightened the supply in the region and caused prices to skyrocket. As a result, some chocolatiers are exploring cost-cutting alternatives. In this next segment, we visit a chocolate shop to learn about the surging prices firsthand. For chocolatiers, the last several months have been nonstop. You get Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's Day, a little bit of break, Easter, and now things kind of slow down a little bit. Jocelyn Dubuque is the owner and chef of Jardy Chocolates. She's tasked with making chocolate confections of different flavors, shapes, and colors. But this year, since the price of cocoa has gotten significantly more expensive, she's rethinking the kind of treats she makes and how she makes them. Like this marshmallow chocolate bunny. It's a chocolate cookie with a vanilla bean marshmallow, and then it's covered in milk chocolate. So for the, you know, 30 grams that you're getting, only 18 grams of that is chocolate, which means it's a much lower ingredient cost for me, much lower labor for me as well, which means that I can pass along those lower costs. In January of 2023, Dubuque was paying $13.50 a kilo for chocolate. This week, she's paid $15.71 a kilo. So that's a 16% increase. Uh, the white chocolate, like I said, has gone up 35% in less than a year. And with no end in sight for when prices could normalize, Dubuque will have to continue finding creative ways to create delicious chocolate while keeping her business afloat. 
Could you imagine a world where every drop of water is precious? Well, for some, that future is now. UNICEF predicts that half of the world's population could be facing issues with water scarcity by next year. The lack of clean drinking water could displace 700 million people by the year 2030. In this next segment, we'll meet a group of astute and innovative MIT students who are engineering ways to make clean drinking water more accessible around the world. CNN's Bill Weir has more. On a planet of nearly 8 billion people, as aquifers are drained, reservoirs evaporate, and sea levels rise, Earth's freshwater supply is getting dirtier, saltier, and scarcer. And while desalination keeps some wealthy nations alive, making salt water sweet demands the kind of energy and infrastructure that's just out of reach for the most desperate societies. I really had a chance to teach in a rural area in China um, I was really shocked to see that how struggling they were to get some clean water. That journey was like two hours every day. So it's no wonder that some of the most promising breakthroughs in water tech are coming from the melting pot laboratories of Boston, where MIT's Yang Zong and Linang Zhang invented a machine the size of a suitcase that mimics the circulation power of the ocean, powered only by sunlight they say their prototype can desalinate six liters an hour at a cost cheaper than tap water. So for a device that has the footprint of a solar panel, this will cost around like 150 to $200. Wow, that's cheap. And then, and, and you don't have to plug it in. It doesn't need any external power source. It's just the sun above it. Just yes. Sun, just sun, natural sunlight. Welcome to the Carson Beach. Solar panel, battery, Desalination unit. Meanwhile, a Korean team from MIT came up with another potential game changer. Just drink it. We just sent our most recent prototype to the uh, U.S. Army that can produce the 10 liter per hour of the drinking water with a direct feed of the seawater. Jung Yo tells me his startup ICP WaterTech is just getting its first millions in investment. And after two students from India met as MIT lab partners, and set out to clean and recycle the dirtiest of industrial waste. Their company, Gradient, is the first in the sector to be valued at $1 billion, a clean water unicorn. It just strikes me that these ideas are the result of immigrants coming from developing places who see the problem in a much more acute way than Americans do. And mingling these ideas in a place like Boston at MIT where, the, where the, the dreamers and the doers meet, it's exciting to think about the possibilities of that combination. Yeah, we're really fortunate to be here at MIT and in Boston because we are surrounded by a lot of resources. And right now, just like sponge, um, learning all these things. Seawater is the most abundant resource covering the earth, and solar is accessible everywhere. And then, like, why not like make them, you know, like uh, combine? And then, like, uh, it can be a very powerful tool. It's more like an equitable resource to anyone, anywhere. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, another domino effect of deliciousness. Yesterday we saw some cereal boxes, but today's is even cheddar. These super cool kids in North Battleford, Saskatchewan collected macaroni and cheese donations in an attempt to break a Guinness World Record. The record? The largest domino topple for a single serve food item. The Canadian students worked with their neighbors to track down 7,000 boxes of mac and cheese. Then Kraft Heinz Canada matched them for another 5,000. Guinness is currently reviewing the world record attempt the real win all of those boxes are now headed to the local food bank to help feed those in need that's a really good story so good i can't embarrass it all right congrats to dr street's class at the university of south carolina for the hashtag your word wednesday winner astute an adjective meaning having or showing shrewdness and an ability to notice and understand things clearly just like usc's women's hoops astute coach don staley today's shout out goes to greenland central school in greenland new hampshire rise up and this shout out goes to Northeast Magnet High School in Bel Air, Kansas. We see you. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.